All right, at this time we're gonna to call to order the regular session of the governing body of the city of Lampasas. If y'all would please rise at this time and Chief Bailey, if you would lead us in invocation. Please join me in prayer. Dear Lord, as we send our children, our teachers and our school staff back into schools, we ask that you give them the faith and trust in you to know that everything's going to be all right, that they can put all their worries aside in you, Lord. Lord, we ask that you end this virus and that you heal all that are ill. Lord, we ask that you watch over our meeting today and that you guide us and direct us in your will. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Again, at this time, anyone in the, in the audience or count up on the dais, if you are six feet from the closest person and you intend to stay that distance, you may remove your mask at this time. In the effort to speak clearly and be heard on the recording, I'm going to do so. I don't believe we have any presentations and proclamations this evening. I do want to go ahead and give out the phone number for those watching from home that might wish to call in. The phone number to reach us here in the council chambers is 512 5560332 Item 1.1 Public Hearing Citizens Comments Any citizen who desires to address the City Council on a matter not included on the agenda may do so at this time. The City Council may not deliberate on items presented under this agenda item. Is there anyone who wishes to speak on an item not included on the agenda? Item 1.2, Citizens' Comments. Any citizen who desires to address the City Council on a matter that is included on the agenda may do so at this time. Is there anyone who wishes to speak on an item that is included on the agenda? 1.3, Public Hearing to receive citizen input on items to be considered in the proposed budget for the fiscal year 2020-2021. Is there any citizen who wishes to speak regarding the proposed budget? Wishes to call in regarding the proposed budget? To have a motion to close this public hearing. So moved. Second. A second from Councilman White. All in favor, please say aye. 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 That's unanimous. 2.0 minutes. 2.1, discussion of possible action concerning approval of minutes of the regular meeting on July 27th, 2020. I'm moved to approve. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 That's unanimous. 2.2, discussion of possible action concerning approval of minutes of the special session held on August 3rd, 2020. I didn't see any corrections. Recommend approval. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. That's also unanimous. 3.0, consent agenda. 3.1, discussion of possible action regarding purchases and charges in excess of $4,000 from July 1st, 2020 to July 31st, 2020. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. second. A motion and a second from Councilman Williamson. All in favor, please say aye. 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 It's unanimous. We don't have any boards or department reports this evening. 5.0, routine matters. 5.1, city manager's operational report. Mayor and Council, uh, just a couple of brief comments. Do want to let you know that we were approved for a Texas Historic Commission uh, marker for the Calvert Municipal Building. This project was really driven by Mr. Jeff Jackson, who did a lot of the research and then drafted the uh, application and marker narrative. Uh, we have process of payment, but it may be later this fall before we receive our, our plaque, uh, and uh, certainly we'll, we'll uh, have a little celebration when that arrives. Library, we've gotten a lot of great comments on the post we put out uh, related to improvements over there. We all know that the, the park is really coming along, and in fact, uh, I was privy to see a, a huge piece of 
uh, sitting sculpture that the Oldham uh, folks are working on to put in the park. That'll be a great asset. We felt like we were gonna stripe the parking lot anyway, and we felt like we really wanted it to look like a complete uh, project. So uh, uh, Carlos and Ricky uh, went ahead and did the fog seal as well. So uh, really pleased with the way that, that turned out, and I think it's a great uh, impression of our, our library. WCID, just to let you know, they have submitted uh, through the Hill Country Water and Soil Conservation a uh, application to upgrade one of the dams to that high hazard classification. I think we've mentioned that to you from time to time that, uh, the, that uh, five of the nine uh, will actually require that sort of improvement. Uh, this particular dam that they've looked at uh, will actually catch water from two other dams, so it's probably a very appropriate first one to upgrade. The application estimates about $5 million uh, for funding for the project and the local match being about 1.75% or a little less than $90,000. The WCID does have some funds, but there is a possibility that as we get closer to that project being implemented, uh, you know, being asked to contribute or contribute along the way, uh, but certainly that project will not get initiated any sooner than 2023, perhaps 2024. Uh, LAFTA, just wanted to let you know that staff did attend LAFTA meeting on August 4th to, uh, there's to, to provide any comment if they had uh, uh, any questions that came up through their discussion re related to uh, locating a skate park at Campbell Park. Um, the LAFTA board had been approached about their opinion and possible location and had actually met individually with uh, the uh, folks that are promoting uh, a skate park. Um, a couple of comments that are worthy of note that came from some of their members. Uh, they felt like ultimately it was a city park and that the funding wasn't really a concern of LAFTA. Their primary concern is where do we locate a, a pavilion as well as a skate park. I think generally they were supportive of it. It was just a matter of, you know, let's not put the skate park where the pavilion goes and let's not put the pavilion where the skate park goes. So I think we're going to continue that coordination if, and, and to offer that assistance to them. Um, but uh, I think it's, uh, it's just a matter of, of that coordination. Internet, uh, just to let you know that we have met, staff has met with two uh, companies this week uh, that are initiating a fiber to the home network uh, in both cases. Uh, I, think, I think they're looking at somewhere moving fairly quickly in the next 60 to 90 days. Uh, you know, I, again, we initially felt like uh, the city and perhaps LEDC we were going to be financially participating in this project. I think we've created the atmosphere and created enough noise in terms of the need that uh, uh, the private market has, has stepped in and uh, we certainly want to be there to uh, support them and uh, make, a, make land pass as uh, attractive to other folks that work in other metro markets as well as uh, a lot of folks that are uh, working more and more from home. Uh, Hannah Springs this past week, uh, out of caution, we put a temporary fence around the springs. We had to remove that fence um, as a kind of a, a negative visual imp uh, impression as well as to aid in the cleaning. Uh, st that is a, a temporary fence. Staff will uh, continue to look at different options for the security of that, that, uh, uh, that asset. The last thing we want to have happen is someone to get into the springs, uh, which is, you know, on the order of 10 to 11 feet deep and not be able to get out. Um, so we continue to look at options, and I think uh, Chris Eicher is going to uh, be prepared to talk about uh, uh, different uh, security options as well as uh, seek, a, uh, uh, seek some input from our risk pool uh, regarding uh, that security. It's not a universally uh, supported item, uh, but we do feel like it is a public health and safety item, and it is necessary uh, to, to limit uh, exposure for the city. CDBG visit, this is great news. They're going to come in and visit us, and usually when they come to visit, they take some pictures and they say, we're going to get the contract ready for you, which means we're going to disrupt Avenue C again. So that side of town, is just, we just kind of been inconveniencing folks at travel down Avenue C and Avenue E now for about three or four years now, but this will be to replace sewer line and Avenue C from Key to Porter. Uh, we're uh, excited about this project. Uh, the funding of it, uh, it actually, I think the uh, 
engineer's estimate of probable cost is probably higher than our funding. We may have to match a little bit more than that, but uh, that'll come together as the, the project contracted and as we seek bids. Be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Finley. Out of 5.2, Mayor's comments, I just wanted to take a very quick second to thank staff. Budget time of the year is always stressful from each department working within its, with its own staff to working to back up with Yvonne and Finley. We, this budget year has been, knock on wood, pretty smooth, and we, we know that comes from the efforts that we don't see going on during the day when we're not around. I also want to thank staff, you know, in addition to doing their regular job, I know that we've had the consistent ORRs coming in. I know Christina spends a good amount of time working on that, so we appreciate you juggling that along with your regular duties. So, um, 6.0, unfinished business, we don't have any. 7.0, new business. 7.1, discussion of possible action regarding extending the Hillside Acres preliminary plat approval for an additional six months. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, just to give you a little background, Hillside Acres is the uh, Matt McDonald development out on um, 580 across from the sports complex. Um, it was brought to y'all probably a little over a year ago with regards to approval, and the initial approval had expired, so we brought it back to you in February. Well, here we are six months out again, and they're not quite ready to break ground yet. So you have an engineering report next to you that explains that they would like to have more time and extend out their preliminary plat while they're continuing to iron out some details, as well as the development agreement, other things that we're working on. I have a motion from council. I move to approve. Second. A motion is second. Questions or comments? All in favor, please say aye. 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 That is unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. 7.2, discussion of possible action regarding approval by resolution to apply for EDA grant funding by Lampasas Economic Development Corporation. Good evening. This is part of the application through the EDA um, to help fund the phase one development of the business park, which will include water, wastewater, roadways, and drainage. Part of the application process asks that city council um, approves through a resolution for the grant application. So we're just asking for a motion to approve the resolution. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion to second. Questions or comments? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Um, that is Thank unanimous. 7.3, discuss, discuss and consider proposal from Hendricks Consulting Engineers for a mechanical, electrical, and plumbing limited assessment for the hostess house in the amount of $2,500. Uh, Mayor and Council, uh, we have requested a uh, proposal from Hendricks Consulting Engineers. They are the same company did the MEP on the Calvert Building as, as well as the MEP on the uh, uh, wastewater and water shop and lab. Uh, I just want to point out a couple of things. He does provide us a, a discount. This is basically for a one trip, meeting with staff, reviewing and setting forth uh, a plan of action for uh, possible uh, upgrades that would be uh, uh, necessary. Um, he may come back with you need to do some additional study on this particular area. So it's not a design. And it is also conditioned on that, you know, if you do, if we do any um, more specific design that they would be the party that would do that. It would certainly be my recommendation. Obviously, you would still see a proposal and have to approve that proposal, but uh, we staff didn't see any reason not to go forward with this, this particular proposal. I have a motion from council. Recommend approval. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. That is unanimous. 7.4, discuss and consider modifications to the fiscal year 2021 budget. Does council have any modifications they want to make? 7.5, discussion of possible action concerning the proposed tax rate upon all property subject to taxation within the city of Lampasas, Texas for the 2020 tax year for the use and support of the municipal government of the city of Lampasas for the fiscal year beginning October 1, 2020 and ending September 30th, 2021, apportioning said levy among the various funds and items for which revenue must be raised, in, including providing a sinking fund for the retirement of the bonded debt of the city. Mayor and Council, as you can tell, there are some changes to how we're doing our tax rate this year as a result of Senate Bill 2. 
uh, which uh, re reformed and, and set uh, certain caps on uh, municipalities' ability to raise taxes uh, or the, the extent at which they could. And, and just to be clear, there, the terminology has changed as well as the definition. So we're familiar with the terminology of effective and rollback, and now the terminology is uh, no new and uh, voter approval rate. However, those don't line up with what the old definition was. So anyway, so this agenda item uh, uh, asks that you uh, announce the proposed tax rate for the city. Uh, what we have currently budgeted is the same tax rate that we have had since, I believe, 2008. Um, and uh, it, uh, 395218 uh, cents uh, would be the, the amount. So if you would uh, uh, entertain or consider a motion, uh, that, that is the proposed tax rate, uh, and then Christina will need to take a roll call vote. It's to be read. Do you? So, so I move that the proposed tax. I move that the proposed tax rate of point three nine five two one eight for the city of Montassa for the fiscal year of twenty twenty one. Do I have a second? Second. At this time, we'll have a roll call vote. Approved. 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 7.6, discussion of possible action concerning the scheduling of one public hearing regarding the proposed tax rate upon all property subject to taxation within the city of Lampasas for the 2020 tax year for the use and support of the municipal government of the city of Lampasas for the fiscal year beginning October 1, 2020 and ending September 30th, 2021 portioning said levy among the various funds and items for which revenue must be raised, including providing a sinking fund for the debt, sinking fund for the retirement of the bonded debt of the city. Mayor and Council, this is also a requirement of Senate Bill 2. Because your tax rate is in between the, uh, the no new and the voter approval rate, it does require the scheduling of one public hearing. Uh, the timing is also outlined in the summary statement in terms of how soon or how late you know, the, the timing as it relates to the approval of your budget and the formal approval of the tax rate. Uh, the proposed date for the public hearing is September 8th at 5.30, uh, which does fall within seven days prior to the meeting to adopt the tax rate, which would be on the 14th. Um, so if uh, what we were, would ask council to consider is a motion to uh, schedule the proposed tax rate, uh, this proposed hearing on the tax rate for uh, September 8th, 2020, uh, Per the language that's in the recommended uh, recommendation on the uh, summary sheet, and it doesn't call for a roll call. However, I think, Mayor, I'd just assume you have a roll call vote just in, in the event that it's necessary. Sure. I move to schedule one public hearing on the proposed tax date for Tuesday, September 8th, 2020, at 5:30 p.m. And the meeting to vote on the tax rate will be Monday, September 14th, 2020, at 6 p.m. I have a second. Second. At this time, let's take a roll call vote. Move to approve. Approved. Approve. Approved. Approved. Item 7.7, .7, discussion of possible action regarding an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Lampasas, Texas, updating the early voting dates to begin on October 13th, 2020, and ending October 30th, 2020, updating early voting times and locations, updating polling times and locations, and updating election voting clerk information for the postponed general election, formally ordered to be held on the second day of May, 2020, for the purpose of electing the expired terms of council members places three, four, and five of the city council of the city of Lampasas, Texas, currently to be held on November 3rd, 2020, uniform election date, providing a repealer clause, providing a severability clause, and providing an effective date. Mayor and council, uh, this ordinance right here is um, provides a notice of the early voting change as well as the notice of all the polling locations. Since this general election is going to be held in November, we postponed it, um, and that was due to uh, Governor Abbott's declaration on that. He also extended the early uh, voting by personal appearance. 
uh, which gives an extended week. And so it starts October the 13th and will run through October 30th. Uh, so that would just bring all this. Other than that, the original uh, election that you called, uh, actually everything else is the same with the exception of making sure I make uh, the early voting as well as the polling location changes on here. Uh, early voting um, would take place uh, in the, the way I've listed on there, which would be in the um, Lamp Passage County Annex Conference Room. And then of course we'll have five polling locations on the day of the election. And this would be the first and final reading on it, on this one change. Do you have a motion to approve the first and final reading? I move to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Questions or discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 That is unanimous. 7.8, discussion of possible selection of a website photo contest winner. Mayor and City Council, there were five photo entries for the month of July. Does Council have a recommendation on a winner? I uh, recommend entry two. Second. I have a motion and a second for entry two. All in favor, please say aye. 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 That is unanimous. Congratulations, Vanetta Chapman. It's a beautiful picture. 7.9, discussion of possible action regarding approval of the investment and strategy policy resolution. As you can tell, I've been substituting for Vaughn here for a few agenda items, and I'm doing my best, but it's hard to fill her shoes. Uh, this is a, uh, uh, your, your investments policy uh, is taken up on an annual basis. There have not been no changes to it. Just as a reminder, this policy governs uh, how the city invests funds, and it is in compliance with the Texas Public Funds Investment Act. Do you have a motion to approve the investment and strategy policy? Recommend approval. Second. A motion and a second. Questions and comments? All in favor, please say aye. 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 It is unanimous. 7.10, discussion of possible action regarding accelerated purchase of 18 V300 body cameras from WatchGuard on a purchase plan with no interest. Mayor Council, originally we uh, had a proposal, I'm uh, sorry, a quote of $42,000. Lieutenant Montgomery was able to uh, get us a much better quote for uh, a payment plan of $36,515. So we seek permission to enter a watch guard contract payment plan for 18 body cameras. We also request permission to make the first payment, PD payment of, of $12,171.67 and pay $1,600 for in-car transfer kit um, installation cost. And then uh, $228.33 cents for incidentals not to exceed $14,000. These body cameras are for the patrol division and an animal control officer, Joe Schwartzer. The total cost for the contract we are asking to enter again is that $13,515. It's interest free for us. WatchGuard secures a loan and pays the interest. The program includes the first payment as the discount interest that WatchGuard pays at $1,880.72 and three payments of $12,171.67 made thereafter by the PD. The cost includes three years of warranty for this four-year program. Uh, the installer has offered to install for us at $100 per unit for $1,600. That's additional savings as well, rather than having WatchGuard come down and install. So by paying the first year now, rather than in year four, we can enter an extended maintenance agreement in year four that's about $3,500 for, $3, to $4,000 with uh, no payment due in that fourth year. We would already made it. This will give the same year that the, that the investigators' cameras roll around for their extended maintenance, and then all of our cameras will fall in together for year number five when we have to replace them again. We're not able to get warranty in year five, and the life of the camera runs out in year five with that. So what we're asking for is to enter the contract, go ahead and make that first payment, installation and then incidentals of the $228.33 because we always end up with needing an extra cable, a bolt, a bracket or something with that. 
Um, recommend approval for the accelerated purchase not to exceed $14,000. Thank second. you. Second. I have a motion and a second from Councilman Williamson. Questions or comments? All in favor, please say aye. 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 It is unanimous. Item 7.11, discussion of possible action regarding accelerated purchase of a new telephone system for Lampasas Police Department. Mayor, Council, once again, we were able to uh, come in at a reduced rate for the request for accelerated purchase. So I'm requesting permission to make an accelerated purchase from Southern Star Communications to install our in-house uh, phone system, new in-house phone system for the police department. I'm asking to um, an ex make an accelerated purchase not to exceed $19,000. The price of the quote from Southern Star is $18,130.98 and an additional $869.02 for incidental, incidentals so that we don't exceed $19,000. Uh, Friday, I met with Mr. Link and we did another walkthrough, updated our quote for the police department. The quote includes an additional cabinet. We are just over uh, the phones and voicemail for one cabinet now, so we have those extensions. And then I'll tell you, in 2019, four of us individually counted how many phones we would need. We came up with one total of 39, and in 2020, we come up with 38. So we feel like we're going to find that other phone where that other phone belongs once we start installing the phone system. Um, Mr. Link is also very generously going to donate some cable and jacks and molding and kits for two dispatch phones that need recording. And then there's also uh, a possibility of an add-on switch so that we can intercom back and forth with City Hall. We don't want that switch if one system goes down and it takes both buildings out. But if we can do that where if one building goes down, the other building still operates, then we would like to add that as well. Um, for future, bu future budget considerations, Mr. Uh, Link, Southern Star, has given us a one-year warranty on our phone. After that, there's a maintenance contract of $2,277 per year. That's $189.75 monthly. I have a motion from council. Move to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Questions or comments? All in favor, please say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Thank you very Thank much. You, Chief. I have a motion to adjourn. So oh. moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Good night and goodbye. <laughs>